Elements of fiction. Theme and plot. Part 2. The theme of a story is the most important thing the author wants readers to understand. It's the author's thoughts about a general belief of how things are or how they should be. Theme is the central idea or meaning of a story. The theme is an argument or an issue on which the story revolves. It is not plot, nor is it the story. It germinates like a seed, and a story with plot and characters is woven around it. It provides a unifying point around which the plot, characters, setting, point of view, symbols, and other elements of a story are organized. Be careful to distinguish theme from plot, the story's sequence of actions, and from subject, what the story is generally about. In most cases, the story is woven around a particular idea, which the writer wants to communicate to his or her readers. This idea is what we refer to as the theme. It is not enough to just write the idea down that would not be a creative writing, but just a word or group of words on a page. It would not make sense. The writer decides on an idea and builds a story around it. Characters and actions are created to dramatize this idea. The way this is treated is the subject matter, which sometimes is reflected in the title. Theme is usually seen as an abstract concept, like love, marriage, corruption, bad leadership, crime, justice, and many other issues that reflect human experiences. This means that the theme is not written down anywhere in the work, so you have to read the novel, novella, or short story very well to decipher the theme. If you have read Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, for instance, the central idea there is marriage. There are different forms of marriage, and couples marry for various reasons. You will see also how pride and prejudice affect a particular marriage. In fables, the theme is the moral, or lesson, the story teaches. The moral may even be stated at the end of the story. Here are a few other familiar themes you'll find in stories. Story themes. Don't cry over spilled milk. Believe in yourself. Deeds speak louder than words. Honesty is the best policy. Justice for all. Bad things sometimes happen to good people. Don't envy others. Be happy with what you have. Money can't buy happiness. To have a friend, you have to be a friend. Don't believe everything you hear. An author may not state the theme directly, but you can figure it out. Think about what the characters in the story are like, and what they do, and ask yourself questions like. Did something that happened in the story change a character? How do the character's actions relate to things in my life? What message is the author trying to send me? Does the title of the story give a clue to the theme? It is important to recognize the difference between the theme of a literary work and the subject of a literary work. The subject is the topic on which an author has chosen to write the theme. However, makes some statement about or expresses some opinion on that topic. For example, the subject of a story might be war, while the theme might be the idea that war is useless. Plot. In prose fiction, the author tells a story by dramatizing human conditions and human relationships. In doing this, he or she uses characters to live out the experiences presented in the work as they engage in certain actions and involve themselves in series of events and incidents which are arranged in a particular sequence. This is plot. A story that is well arranged is presented in an artistically satisfying manner. Plot is one of the elements of prose fiction. An author who deploys these elements effectively will produce an effective work. Plot, the action element in fiction, is the arrangement of events that make up a story. 
Many fictional plots turn on a conflict, or struggle between opposing forces, that is usually resolved by the end of the story. Typical fictional plots, begin with an exposition, that provides background information needed, to make sense of the action, describes the setting, and introduces the major characters. These plots develop a series of complications or intensifications of the conflict, that lead to a crisis or moment of great tension. The conflict may reach a climax or turning point, a moment of greatest tension that fixes the outcome. Then, the action falls off as the plot's complications are sorted out, and resolved, the resolution or denouement. A diagram of plot structure first created by the German novelist and critic, Gustav Freytag, 1816-1895. Gustav Freytag was a 19th century German novelist, who saw common patterns in the plots of stories and novels, and developed a diagram to analyze them. He diagrammed a story's plot, using a pyramid, like the one shown here. Exposition. Rising action. Climax. Falling action. Denouement. Exposition. The beginning of the story, that tells the audience who the characters are, and introduces the conflict. Rising action. Conflict is starting to show in the story. Complication, or exciting force, is what fuels the rising action, and may incite later events. Longer works may have several complications. 1. Man versus man, or the individual versus another individual. 2. Human versus nature, or the individual versus the physical world. 3. Human versus society, or the individual versus the civilization or order. 4. Human versus herself or himself or, the individual versus the self, human nature. Climax. The main character is having conflict, conflict or mentally, most exciting or suspenseful moment when something happens, to determine the outcome of the conflict. Falling action. The main character is getting more conflict, and almost at the end of the story, the conflict is in the process of being resolved or unraveled. Denouement. Resolution the end of the story, and the solution to the problem. Types of conclusion or ending, resolution. 1. Happy ending, everything ends well, and all is resolved. 2. Tragic or unhappy ending, many events in life do not end pleasantly, so literary fiction that emulates life, is more apt to have an unhappy conclusion, forcing the reader to contemplate the complexities of life. 3. Open-ended, lack of resolution, partial resolution, indeterminate, no definitive ending or resolution occurs, leaving the reader, to ponder the issued raised, by the story. The exposition or presentation of the initial situation, is disturbed by a complication or conflict, which produces suspense, and eventually leads to a climax, crisis, or turning point. The climax, is followed by a resolution of the complication, French denouement, with which the text usually ends. Most traditional fiction, drama, and film, employ this basic plot structure, which is also called linear plot, since its different elements follow a chronological order. In many cases, even in linear plots, flashback, flash-forward and foreshadowing, introduce information concerning the past or future, into the narrative. Flashback. A plot structuring device, inserting a scene from the fictional past, into the fictional present. Flash forward. A plot structuring device, inserting a scene from the fictional future, into the fictional present. Foreshadowing. A hint or clue, about what will happen, at a later moment in the plot. Flashbacks interrupt what's going on in a story, to tell about something that happened in the past. Authors use words, like, he remembered when, or, she thought about that time last year when. Authors sometimes signal, when the flashback is over, by using words like now or today. A flashback, gives readers a deeper understanding, of a character's personality. Example. You're getting it, good girl. Anya cheered, as she ran beside her little sister. Anya smiled, remembering when her dad had taught her, to ride a bike. 
she could still see him, running beside her, even when he didn't need to, anymore. He'd always been so protective. But now, he was gone, and she alone had to take care of the family. I still need you, Dad, she whispered. Foreshadowing gives readers clues about what might happen later in a story. Authors use foreshadowing to build suspense, tempt readers to predict what might happen, and persuade them to read on to find out if they were right. Think about it. Even as a little kid, no one had to tell you that, when Mrs. Rabbit told Peter, don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden, he'd go and get into trouble. The author's words foreshadowed danger. Example. I looked at the speedometer. Paul was driving even faster. Please slow down. I said, we're coming to a really bad curve in the road. But he didn't slow down, and the snow was drifting higher and higher. I could hardly see the road. A narrative can have one or more plot lines, that is, events can center around one or more groups of characters. There can be a main plot line, and one or more subplot lines. Such subplots can serve as a contrast to the main plot, when, for instance, there is the same constellation of events, in a higher and a lower social sphere. In Dickens' Bleak House, for instance, there is the plot line which centers around Lady Dedlock, and the discovery of her guilty past, and there is the plot line which centers around Esther Summerson and her growth to maturity. At certain points, these two plot lines merge, as it is discovered, that Esther is Lady Dedlock's illegitimate daughter. Some narratives are very tightly plotted. Everything happens for a reason or a purpose and one event is the consequence of another. Quest stories or fairy tales are usually tightly plotted. When each plot line is brought to a satisfactory ending, one also talks of a closed structure. For example the death or marriage of the protagonist, or the final defeat of an evil force. This is often the case in Victorian novels, where there is frequently an entire chapter at the end, tying up all the loose ends of the plot, and giving a short glimpse of the character's future. See for example George Eliot, Middlemarch or Charles Dickens, Hard Times. In a closed plot structure, earthly rewards and punishments are often distributed, in proportion to the virtue or vice, of the various characters at the end. This is called poetic justice. A tight plot, generally contributes to an increase in suspense. Conversely, lack of suspense or tension in a narrative, can in part be explained by the absence of a tight plot. There is very little tension, for instance, in Virginia Woolf's short story, Kew Gardens, mostly because practically nothing happens. A person sits down on a park bench, watches people go by, gets up again. There is a similar lack of events, in Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot. Many modern and postmodern writers, deliberately try to eschew event-dominated stories and tight plots, because they feel, it is not an accurate rendering of reality, and they claim to be more interested in character than in plot. Plot and character depend on each other, of course. No plot or story can develop without characters, and characters are frequently, though not always, developed through plots. Some narratives place less emphasis on the causal connection between events, though there are still plenty of events and action. Instead, episodes might be linked by a common character, such as Moll Flanders in Daniel Defoe's novel, Moll Flanders, or Sam Pickwick in Charles Dickens' Pickwick Papers, or a common theme. Such narratives are described as loosely plotted, or episodic. Plots, that are not brought to a final or preliminary conclusion, are called open-ended plots, or just open plots. J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter, and the Goblet of Fire, for instance, is much more open-ended, than the previous Harry Potter volumes. Here's a look at plot parts, using the familiar story of the Pilgrim's 1620 voyage, on the Mayflower. The Pilgrim's story, 
Basic plot. Exposition. Tells the problem, or conflict. Some people in 17th century. England are persecuted. They need to go somewhere safe. Rising action. Main part of the story. In September 1620, some 102 people, along with their animals, furniture, and supplies needed for a new life, head for America. Aboard Mayflower over rough seas. On the grueling 65-day voyage, many people are sick, some die, and a baby is born. Climax. Turning point toward a solution to the problem. November 9. The crew spots land off Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The ship heads south to Virginia, where pilgrims have permission to settle. Bad weather and dangerously shallow water force the captain to turn back north. Falling action. Events from the climax to the solution. November 11. The ship lands in Massachusetts. The pilgrims come ashore to explore the area. They decide to settle in Plymouth, and live on the ship while building on shore. Resolution. Problem is solved. Early 1621, the pilgrims move into their new homes in America, at Plymouth Plantation. Key terms. Story. Plot. Single plot. Multiple plot. Tight plot. Closed structure. Poetic justice. Loose or episodic plot. Open-ended plot. Flashback. Flash-forward. Foreshadowing. 